The Steam Deck has been slowly rolling out for the last couple of months now since February, and one of the biggest questions that people ask over and over and over again is, will this game play on the Steam Deck? So here is a list of 10, and a couple of honorable mentions, farming and crafting games that will run, and run pretty damn well, on the Steam Deck. Let's get into it. So this is me. This is me, and you really don't want to be this guy. You want to be able to kick back, relax, have a low-key, enjoyable experience without the stress, without pulling out your hair, without wanting to throw your controller. If you're this guy, pay attention to this list, because this list of games is going to give you relaxation, satisfaction, comfort, a cozy, warm feeling. So here are the 10 games, and I brought a friend of mine in to help me out with this video today, because I have not played every single game on this list. I've played about, uh, out of the 14 or so that I'm actually going to mention, I've played about 8 or 9, uh, and my friend Josh from the YouTube channel Play With Josh. Hey guys, Josh here. He uh, sat down and discussed with me and decided how we would rank these. As usual, anytime someone ranks games, your mileage will vary. So let us know down in the comments. I'll be passing your comments on to Josh as well. And uh, we will see what everybody's favorite relaxing, cozy farming and crafting sims are on the Valve Steam Deck. Number 10 here is a game that I recently purchased. I've been looking for a farming and crafting game on a console that has some of the idle mechanics that I enjoy from Facebook style games or mobile style games where the game keeps playing in the background whether you're there or not and your crops grow uh, in the background whether you're playing the game or not and you come back and they're ready to harvest and in Farm Together that's exactly what you get. You get a beautiful 3D game that runs at 60 frames per second, uh, smooth as butter, on the Steam Deck, and it is a joy to play. There is a huge variety of plants and vegetables and trees and buildings and things like that. You've got quests and missions, enough to keep you busy and engaged, and coming back two, three, four times a day for those little 20 or 30 minute sessions. Although it is at number 10 on this list, the only reason why it's at the bottom of the list is because I've only had it for a couple of days and I haven't really had a chance to fully review it. Number nine is another Steam Deck verified game. This game runs absolutely perfectly and that is Grow Song of the Ever Tree. Now the reason why it is again a little bit low on this list it's actually a beautiful game so it is a you know a farming and crafting simulator where you are interacting with a large world where you need to bring it back to life and that is a really great concept, the graphics are beautiful, it's really a nice game, but it does get a little bit tedious further on in the game because you're kind of doing the same things over and over and over again. Uh, the farming in the game is a little bit shallow, according to Josh. I haven't played it yet, I've played another game that we'll mention here in a minute by the same developer. Uh, but he says the farming's a little bit shallow and, you know, depending on what your mileage is with farming games, you may want something that's fairly simple or you may want something more complex. And we definitely have some more complex games further on in this list, so stick around. Uh, number eight is a game that is particularly near and dear to my heart. Now, I have not played this on the Steam Deck yet, but it is fully playable on the Steam Deck. I have played this game on the Nintendo Switch, and I absolutely love it. And that is a game called Kataria Fables. Now, this game is more of an adventure action game with farming elements. Uh, you definitely have farming elements, a little farm that you have to grow your crops and stuff in order to sell to the local town and make some money to upgrade your stuff. And there's a lot of crafting involved in crafting weapons and things like that because there is quite a bit of combat and a pretty decent rich story. And I just absolutely love the presentation of this game. It looks great on the Nintendo Switch, and I can only expect that it's going to run smoother and better on the better hardware of the Steam Deck. Number seven, a game that I said it was going to mention from the same developer 
as Grow Song of the Evertree, and this is a game that I have played both on Nintendo Switch and on PS4, and it's a fantastic game, and that is Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. So Yonder is another farming adventure game, and I really love it when they mix these two different genres and give you kind of more to do in the game. So it's definitely a farming and crafting game. You have to build buildings and structures and build up your farm and uh, explore. You have to go and, you know, explore caves and find resources and things like that that you can bring back to, to build up yourself in the game. And I really love that. Yonder is cute. Uh, the graphics are really nice. It's a 3D kind of open world environment that I really love exploring. The characters are cute. The story is charming. And uh, I really recommend this pretty highly, despite the fact that it's number seven on the list here. But we're starting to get into just about every game on this list. I would say every game on this list deserves your attention if you like these style of games. But moving on to number six is a game that I have not played, but I've watched a couple of trailers. Josh has played the game and he said he really loves it. Littlewood is the game and he said it's a cute and interesting game with really neat time mechanics. Uh, for me, it, Watching the trailers and stuff, I'm pretty interested in that 8-bit sort of kind of reminds me a little bit of Stardew Valley and maybe a little bit of Earthbound or something mixed together. After you've already saved the world, you now need to rebuild your town and rebuild the community. And it's all about building buildings and doing farming. And as I said, I haven't played it, but I am looking forward to playing it because it really does look cute. This is something I was intending on playing on the Nintendo Switch. It was announced, I believe, last summer in an E3 or a Nintendo Direct of some sort, and I've been interested in it ever since. Now that I can play it on my Steam Deck, that's probably where I'm going to play it, and I'm looking to pick it up as soon as I see it go on sale. Uh, number five is a game that I have uh, played quite a lot, and I absolutely love. It's a little bit of a diversion from the main farming genre. You're not really farming as much per se, but you're doing very similar tasks, and that game is Graveyard Keeper. Graveyard Keeper is this really cool crafting sim where you're looking after a graveyard and you've got so, a cast of you know funny characters, there's a lot of humor in the game. It is again another one of those sort of 8-bit, 16-bit looking worlds, but you've got a lot of area to explore and you've got to do a lot of cool stuff like uh, you know, bring in dead bodies and prepare them to be buried and stuff like that. And you've got to maintain the graveyard. And you've got evil spirits and stuff that you have to manage. And it's really a cute, unique, innovative take on the farming and crafting genre that I really enjoy. And again, I played this on the Nintendo Switch and I do intend to purchase this, but this is a Steam Deck verified game, so it's going to run fantastic on the deck and I'm just basically waiting for a sale because I already own this game on the Switch and I don't necessarily want to pay full price but definitely something to put on your wish list. Moving on to number four here and this is another game that I have not played but I have been very interested in playing and that is Unpacking. Unpacking is this casual relaxing game where you've just moved into a house and you're literally unpacking and you're placing things around the house in a way uh, that's aesthetically pleasing, but there's also sort of a right way and a wrong way to kind of do it in order to achieve certain things within the game to create kind of a zen flow in the house and that sort of thing. I'm very interested in playing this game, and you should be too. Josh says that it's it's got a really subtle storytelling mechanic. It just kind of bleeds out the story uh, throughout the gameplay rather than just giving you a lore dump. He says it's a very satisfying, relaxing game that you can just play chill for hours. Moving on to number three, and this is a game that I, again, I played this on the Switch first, but it's available on pretty much every platform, and that is Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. And boy, do I love this game. This belongs close to the top of the list. Sakuna of Rice and Ruin is this complex and beautiful farming game with this whole backstory that involves Japanese mythology, and you play as this, you know, Japanese uh, you know, princess of the sort of afterlife or whatever, uh, magical princess, and you get banished to this island and you have to look after the island and be the overseer of the island and you have to grow rice in order to 
level yourself up and the better you grow the rice and the better your harvest is and the better the quality of your rice uh, in turn the better the quality of your combat abilities really engaging game absolutely gorgeous graphics and i will definitely be picking this up on steam to play on my deck in the near future because it's about time i went back to this game okay so we've only got two games left on the list plus a couple of honorable mentions so what is number two and josh and i absolutely agree on this game and that is spirit fairer spirit fairer is this really interesting game and there is farming and there is crafting definitely and cooking and fishing all the essential parts of a really great relaxing casual cozy game but the entire thing comes from the viewpoint of you are taking over the role of not exactly the Grim Reaper, but like a magical being who reaches out to spirits and helps them find their way to the other side, often helping them deal with emotional issues or uh, you know unfinished baggage, baggage from their real life, helping them work through those issues, making them feel comfortable about crossing over to the other side. The story and the characters are rich and compelling. The vibe in this game is absolutely endearing. It's beautiful. The art is beautiful. You float around on this beautiful little boat and you build this boat up over time and put guest rooms in it and kitchens and farming segments of the boat and the boat gets bigger and bigger. You float around in this beautiful ocean and you go to all of these different little islands and this is where you find the spirits and this is where you find resources and things that you need for crafting. Absolutely just a beautiful, chilling, haunting game. Highly, highly recommend playing this game on any platform, but it will play wonderfully on your Steam Deck. And now what is number one? You've stuck around this long? Number one? It's probably not a surprise to anyone. Number one is Stardew Valley, of course. A game that pioneered the genre of farming and crafting for indies. A game that was so successful that it inspired clone after clone and so many different uh, approaches to the genre because developers out there realize that people really love these casual cozy games. Stardew Valley doesn't really need much of an introduction at this point. If you haven't played it and you're watching this video, you absolutely need to play it. There is no denying that Stardew Valley is at the top, the pinnacle of the indie farming and crafting scene, and it is a game that all the other developers strive to match at best, and uh, I just can't say enough about Stardew Valley. You absolutely have to play it if you haven't. It's a beautiful sort of 16-bit graphic style. I, I'm not a big fan of the color palette, uh, that kind of harvest oranges and things like that. I'm not the biggest fan of the color palette, but the art style is really beautiful and charming. The game is so deep and complex. There is so much to do between relationships and crafting and growing things and expanding your farm. There's just so much to do. You can play this game for hundreds of hours without getting bored. Absolutely recommend. So that is the list of 10 great farming and crafting games that you can play on your Steam Deck. I do have a couple of honorable mentions, and the reason why they're honorable mentions is because they're a little bit outside the scope of this video. The first one is Two Point Hospital. It's not exactly a crafting game, uh, it's more of a building and management game, but it fits very nicely with the vibe of the other games on this list, and this is built based on the old PC game Theme Hospital, but much more built out. There's a lot more to do. Um, it's developed by Sega and Two Point, and the game is very, very interesting. It's fast-paced, it's exciting, you're constantly building more and more parts of a hospital to make the hospital successful, and you've got all kinds of comedic and wacky, um, you know, injuries and illnesses coming into the hospital that you have to treat in weird, abnormal ways. You've got, you know, hiring doctors and nurses and janitors, and you've got to manage all of their 
uh, you know, quirks and things like that and provide them with the things they need like break rooms and snack machines and bathrooms and all that kind of stuff. It is a very, very fun game and I highly recommend it if you're looking for something a little bit outside the normal farming and crafting stuff. And then the other one, which I just downloaded today and the reason why I didn't really put it on the main list is because I had some problems with it and that is Islanders. This game was also announced to be on the Nintendo Switch some months ago or a year ago on one of the Nintendo Directs. And the idea here is that you've got this minimalist art style. You start with an island, you build the island up, you get further and further depending on how you lay things out and the efficiency of it and that sort of thing. Uh, and it's really, it's just an open building sim. You build things the way you want, you get access to more buildings and more things as you kind of level up your island. Uh, it can be really relaxing and really fun, however, it does not, uh, by default, run very well on the Steam Deck at all. If you're going to play it on the Steam Deck, and you can, you have to do quite a bit of extra work and tooling in order to get it to run. Now, the, as far as the graphics go, the game runs fine. It's the controls that are a problem. This game, the PC version of this game, is designed for mouse and keyboard, and you have to go in and remap a whole bunch of buttons to even get through the tutorial because it won't let you, um, you know, even do things the way you might want to with the controller and that sort of thing. In terms of things like camera rotation and that sort of thing, you actually have to go in and remap some of your, uh, your back paddle buttons and things like that to be sort of your camera rotation and right mouse click, left mouse click buttons and things like that. It is playable. It is a nice game but it is going to take a little additional tweaking and that mileage is going to vary depending on your level of comfort with doing that sort of thing in a PC game. Anyways guys, what did you think of this list? This is just about all of the farming and crafting games that I could find that are currently verified or playable on the Steam Deck. I'm sure there are a couple more. There's a game called um, Witch, Witchwood, I think, that I'm looking into. Um, I haven't checked it out yet, but it looks pretty good. Uh, there's a couple of other games that are in uh, kind of an open beta right now, and they're not really supported yet, uh, and they will be released soon. So keep your eyes on the channel, because when those become finished and ready to play, I will definitely make some content on them. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Let us know down in, your co in the comments what your favorite order and which one of these games you're going to check out next. Thanks so much. Thanks, Josh, for the help on this video. We'll talk to you later. Stay classy.